Hello, I'm Dr. A from the Department of Gastroenterology. I'm going to demonstrate the examination of abdominal system. Like other systemic examination, it has two portions. One is general examination and the other one is systemic examination. Before you examine the abdomen, uh, you have to put the patient under good light and warm surrounding. It is important one. First of all, you have to introduce yourself and you must ask for a permission as well. And secondly, you have to position the patient comfortably uh, with a, a supine position with the head resting on only one pillow in order to relax the abdominal wall. Lastly, you have to remove the clothes so that complete exposure up to uh, pubis and examine face, neck and trunk and the legs as well. So Dr. Mialu, would you like to examine the patient please? Hello Ms. Datu, I am Dr. Mialu. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. May I examine your tummy please? Yes. Okay. Could you expose your tummy for me please? Can you lie with well below? Keep your hand alongside the body. Okay. In general inspection, you have to observe face, neck, trunk, and upper and lower limbs. So shall we start general inspection in the loop? So first of all, you have to notice patient's conscious level, whether patient is drowsy or not, and uh, notice the special smell like fetus hepaticus and hydration status. Examine the eye for jaundice. Can I have a look at your eyes first? Look down upon me, please. Okay. Here. Uh, look at please. Okay. Examine the mouth for angular stomatitis. Okay. Uh, gum hypertrophy and gum bleeding. Show me your teeth, please. Fine. Tan for glossitis and oral thrush. Please pop your tan out for me. Okay. Frenulum for jaundice. Open your mouth widely. Say R. Okay. Please roll up your tent for me. Okay, alright. And don't forget to uh, look for the gland enlargement as well. Is there any sore in your neck? Okay. And shall go down to the upper chest, look for the stick butter of liver, chronic liver insufficiency like divider nevi, gynecomastia, and sparse axillary hair. Can I have a look at your chest, please? Keep your arms out for me. I'm going to examine your hands. Is there any sore in your hand at all? Look at the nail for white nail. Clubbing. Palmer or Athena. Turn around for me, please. To uterine contracture. Right. Please stretch your hands out for me. Okay, cut it out. Spread your finger. Maintain them. Okay, alright. 
Then examine the waves. I'm going to examine your legs, please. May I press a bit? Look for pitting edema, spread marks, mercury spots, and bruises. The second portion of abdominal system examination is the systemic examination of abdominal system proper. So like other system examination, you have to examine systematically starting from inspection, foundation, percussion, expectation. So shall we start from inspection? So inspection of abdominal system should be done at the end of the night. In inspection, you have to observe shape and symmetry of abdomen, whether it is sunken or protuberance. You have to also note the umbilicus, whether sunken, flat or protecting. And also look for visible enlargement of the bladder, uterus or transplanted kidney. You have to also observe skin for surgical scars, striae, collateral veins and direction, caput medusae. So inspect the abdomen tangentially, looking for a movement with respiration and slow waves of peristalsis. And also observe localized swelling at hernia site, like umbilical hernia and incisional hernia. The next step is palpation. Before you palpate the abdomen, Please make sure the examining hands are warm. The second thing is, if the patient's bed is low, uh, you have to sit on or knee beside the patient's bed. And the next step is, uh, ask the patient to report any tenderness elicited during the examination. And also observe the patient's face, any grimace elicited during examination, which indicated uh, local discomfort. Palpation. Light palpation, muscle tone, tenderness and rebound tenderness should be noted. In deep palpation, palpation of specific organ. Liver, you have to record size, edge, surface, consistency and tenderness. If you feel this plane, also note size, notch, surface, consistency and tenderness. If you palpate kidneys, you have to use by manual technique and also record size, surface, consistency and tenderness. So Dr. Nyanu, let's start from light palpation, please. Could I feel your tummy, please? Yes. Is there any sore in your tummy? Yes, My hands are a bit cold. Sorry for that. If you feel any discomfort, please let me know. In light palpation, Place the examining hand on the abdomen and thereafter maintain continuous contact with the patient's abdominal wall. Test muscle tone by light dipping movements over symmetrical areas commencing at a point remote from the site of any pain. And elicit rebound tenderness. Then shall go to deep palpation. Palpate the abdomen more deeply with the flat of the hand. Examine each region in turn, starting remote from any area of tenderness. The predominant use of fingertips should be avoided as it is apt to induce muscular resistance. Then examination of specific organ. So shall we start from palpation of liver. Place the hand flat on the abdomen with the fingers pointing upwards and position the sensing fingers lateral to the rectus muscle 
so that the fingertips lie on a line parallel to the expected liver edge. Start palpation from the trans umbilical plane. Press the hand firmly inwards and upwards and keep it steady while the patient takes a deep breath through the mouth. Take a nice deep breath in and out at the height of inspiration, release the inward pressure on the hand while maintaining the upward pressure. With this movement, the tips of the fingers should slip over the edge of a palpable liver. Trace the surface edge of a palpable liver across the abdomen. And then record size. Note downward enlargement in mid-clavicular line below the right costal margin and then edge whether it is sharp or rounded, surface smooth or irregular or nodular, consistency soft or firm or hard, and tenderness. So this is palpation of liver. And then shall go to palpation of spleen. Place the examining hand on the anterior abdominal wall with the fingertips starting from right ilia fossa Pressing inwards and upwards. Another deep breath, please. Ask the patient to breathe in out while your fingers are advancing towards the left costal margin. If spleen is significantly enlarged, it will bump against the fingertips. At the height of inspiration, release the pressure on the examining hand so that the fingertips slip over the lower pole of the spleen. Palpate the notch at media border and try to insert fingers superficial to mass and left costal margin. Also note size, consistency and tenderness. If still not palpable, position the patient in the right lateral position with the left hip and knee flex and repeat the examination. Please turn towards me. Another deep breath, please. This is the end of palpation of spleen, and then shall go to palpation of kidneys. We have to use bimanual technique to palpate the kidneys. Place one hand posteriorly below the lower rib cage, and the other over the upper quadrant. Push the two hands together firmly but gently as the patient breathes out. Feel for the lower pole moving down between the hands as the patient breathes in deeply. Assess the size, surface and consistency of a palpable kidney. These are the end of palpation. Percussion. Percuss from resonance to dull. Place the percussing finger on the trunk parallel to the anticipated note change. Percuss lightly for superficial structures such as lower border of the liver. More firmly for deeply placed structures such as upper border of the liver. Question of liver. I'm going to tap your tummy now. Right. Lower edge of liver percussion is started at the level below the umbilicus, percussing upwards in mid clavicular line. Upper border of liver dullness in mid clavicular line is percussed, beginning at lung resonance downward towards liver. Percussion of spleen. Percussion of inferior border begins just above the right ilia crest, percussing along the long axis of spleen until the area of dullness is reached. 
Continue percussion upward along the mass towards and above left costa margin to exclude band of resonance. Shifting dullness. Examine the patient supine and percuss from the center of the abdomen into the flank until a dull node is obtained. Mark the level of keep the finger in place as the patient rolls on to the other side. Please turn towards me. Pause for at least 10 seconds. The side piece is suggested if the note becomes resonant and confirmed by obtaining a dull note while percussing back towards the umbilicus. a fluid thrill, place a detecting hand on the patient's flank, flick the skin of the abdominal wall over the other flank using the thumb or forefinger. If a fluid thrill or impulses is felt, repeat the procedure with the patient's hand placed on the abdomen along the midline sagittal plane to dampen any possible thrill transmitted by the abdominal wall. Put your hand here. Another tap, please. Also, percuss over abdominal muscles and full bladder. Another tap, please. Okay. So, final step is auscultation. Auscultate for peristalsis power sounds for at least three minutes. Can I listen to your tummy? Auscultate over the aorta for a groovy. If there is grossly enlarged liver, spleen and kidney, you have to listen for a groovy, venous hum and drop. If the patient is hypertensive, don't forget to listen to Rena Brewery as well. If visible peristalsis is the same, please elicit succussion splash. Place the hands over the lower ribs and shake the patient quickly and rhythmically from side to side. You can dress it now. Okay. Thank you for your kind cooperation. Thank you, Dr. Nyabu. So, this is the end of abdominal system examination. So, I hope you will manage abdominal system examination very well. Thank you. How to confirm the liver? Mass should be in right hypochondrion. It moves with respiration. Finger cannot insinuate between the mass and costal margin, and it continues with liver dullness. How to confirm spleen? Mass should be in left hypochondrion. It moves with respiration. Finger cannot insinuate between the mass and costal margin. You can also palpate splenic knots. Continues with splenic dullness. How to differentiate left kidney and spleen? For kidney. The mass can be palpated by manually. For spleen, mass can be palpated in right hypochondrion superficially. Kidney enlarge downward and laterally, whereas spleen enlarge downward and medially. Spleen has a knot. There is band of percussion over the left hypochondrion for kidney mass. For spleen, there is continuous dullness over the mass.